Okay, guys, let's get back to Ecclesiastes. Um, you know, I've been trying to let the Spirit lead on all what I'm doing for videos. And I have these other video series that I'm doing. Uh, Gad the Seer, Isaiah, Ezekiel, a um, uh, bunch of different ones there, uh, parables. And I've been letting the Spirit lead on what I do next. And what I'm doing is when those ideas come up to cover other subjects that I see going on, I, I roll with that first. Then when there's no inspiration, I go back to these things and start doing these things. Um, so if you don't see, like I haven't done parables in a while, well, that's because I've been led to do some other things. Uh, guys, this is all prompting of the Holy Spirit. I'm not doing this on my own. I don't choose this stuff on my own. I can't stress that enough. Um, when I'm doing the prayer videos, that's not me. That's really not me. That's the Holy Spirit doing that stuff. It may sound weird to say that, but I can't explain it because I know when I start, I don't have no idea what I'm going to say. All of a sudden, it kicks in, and it comes out. So, And a lot of the stuff that I do when I'm reading these things, I, ha I don't pre-read any of this. Every once in a great while, I'll pre-read something to see if it pertains to the subject at hand. Most of the time, it's just off the hip, and it's, so it's Holy Spirit-led. So let's get into Ecclesiastes 4. We haven't touched on this in a while, and I think I'm going to do a parable today, too. I have to babysit. So I'm going to film everything now and set it to upload throughout the day. Evil under the sun, Ecclesiastes 4.1. Then I returned and considered all the oppression that is done under the sun. And look, the tears of the oppressed, but they have no comforter. On the side of their oppressors there is power, but they have no comforter. Now remember what we covered in Ecclesiastes 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now remember there's a playlist. I have playlists for almost everything. So make sure you're going into the playlist tab. Uh, on the home page, excuse me, on the home page, and go and look through those playlists. Have tons of good information down there uh, and tons of good videos. That way you don't have to watch this video when you see it come up. You remember it's a playlist and you can go and you can catch it later on when you have time. Um, like the Book of Romans. Uh, I did the whole Book of Romans. An amazing video series. I couldn't stop doing the Book of Romans. I did four chapters in one day one time. What was it? Uh, Ephesians. I did all of Ephesians in one day. I, I was so intently led to do Ephesians, and I filmed every the whole all the videos in one sitting, and that actually came out really good. So you remember what happened in Ecclesiastes one through three? Solomon, the dude's depressed, and everything is vanity. Nothing, nothing suffices, and I think what he's doing, and we're going to get into it, we're going to get to it uh, eventually, but I think what he's doing, I think he's realizing that. All this physical stuff is worthless. It's the spiritual matters we need to go to. and Because the guy's got everything. He wants for nothing. But I think he's realized that those physical things are very unfulfilling. Especially when you have the mind that he had. The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding he had. Which was akin to the mind of God. And it just made him realize, none of this serves me. But as we unfold through Ecclesiastes, I think we're going to see he's going to, he's going to come to a very stark realization. I think we're going to find some interesting secrets hidden in these scriptures. Because it seems like now every book has stuff hidden in it. Oh, uh, go check out the playlist. I did the small books of the Bible. I did all the books that had one to four chapters. All kinds of cool stuff we found in there. Okay. So on their side of their oppressors, there is power, but they have no comforter. So he's looking at the people that are oppressed. Therefore... I praise the dead who are already dead, more than the living who are still alive. Yet better than both is he who never existed, who has not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. What I'm kind of thinking is things were pretty rough back then. And he was starting to feel it. But he was happy that people hadn't been born yet to see this stuff. Again, I saw that for all toil and every skillful work, a man is envied by his neighbor. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. So you, you don't want to envy what your neighbor has or what they're doing. That's one of the commandments. The, the fool folds his hands and consumes his own flesh. Better a handful with quietness than both hands full together with toil and grasping for the wind. Poor Solomon's come into a really stark realization on things. Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone, without companion. He has neither son nor brother. 
Yet there is no end to all his labors, nor is his eye satisfied with riches, but he never asks, For whom do I toil and deprive myself of good? This also is vanity and a grave misfortune. Let's read that one again. Ecclesiastes 4.8 There is one alone without companion. He has neither son nor brother. Yet there is no end to all his labors. Nor is his eye satisfied with riches, but he never asks, For whom do I toil and deprive myself of good? This is also vanity and a great misfortune, grave misfortune. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. We've heard that before, haven't we? Yesterday, as a matter of fact, For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Do you, you realize what he just said? Look at the hinting, the, the shadow here. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? He's hinting at your, your need for a Savior, your need for Christ. Because when you fall, Christ picks you up. When you're alone and cold, Christ is there to keep you warm. He's there to protect you. Though one may be empowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now he's talking about the brotherhood. Better a poor and wise youth than an old and foolish king who will be admonished no more. For he comes out of prison to be a king, although he was born poor in his kingdom. I saw all living who walk under the sun. They were with the second youth who stands in his place. There was no end of all the people over whom he was made king, yet those who came afterward will not enjoice, rejoice in him. Surely they also, this also is vanity and grasping for the wind. So, as poetic as Ecclesiastes is, clearly we see Solomon is reaching some conclusions based on the things that he sees, but the things that he knows. Because we remember his prayer was, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And God gave it to him without measure. He had insights into things a lot of people didn't, don't give him credit for. There's a lot of the stuff in the Bible he's written. They've got other books that never made it in the Bible that Solomon has written. And there's a lot of stuff in there. But this guy saw a lot of things too. And when he realized none of it made any difference, he saw the wood rot. He saw the rock crumble. He saw the earth collapse. He saw the waters turn bad. He saw the animals die. He saw people die. And it re he realized that it meant nothing. All the things we worry about here mean nothing. This coronavirus is running around. I did that PSA on that. It means nothing. Because in the grand scheme of things, that has no effect on you or your eternity. None. Here, in this life, it looks different. looks terrible. You know, it's it's horrendous to see those things unfolding. But the reality of the of the situation is, good morning, in Christ, you have nothing to worry about. These things don't factor into you. Solomon has gotten to the point here, and I think he may have known about the Savior coming, because I, I'm seeing a few hints here. He's gotten to the place where he realized none of this makes any difference. And I think he's starting to get the idea, I, I would rather just be poor and live in a cave than have what I have, because none of it means anything. I just live my life and go on with it. Now, jump forward a couple thousand years and look at all the great men of the Bible and look at how they lived. John the Baptist, all the apostles, Jesus, lived bare minimum. Come on, Cheech. Come on. So, this life and all the trappings and all the things that we have, of course, in the way the world is now, um, we kind of have to, especially if you have a family. But none of these things matter because none of these things go across with you. None of these things are a benefit to you in the, on the other side. It is the spiritual things that are the most important. So this video was very short, so I may do chapter 5 also and upload both of them today. Okay, guys, that was chapter four. Take the time to go back and reread this or go back and rewatch the videos and listen to what he's, look at where he's headed 
And as you start to see where he's headed, we're going to get there. And we'll see if we all arrive at the same place. Okay, guys, that was chapter four. I'll see you in chapter five.